Good morning or good afternoon or whatever it is, wherever you are. Now, last October, a poll of British voters as a whole found that if UKIP, the party led by Nigel Farage, had a chance of winning in their constituency, 31% of British voters would vote UKIP. Now this spectacular rise in their popularity has been no accident. The party is now genuinely feared by the big three of Cameron's Conservatives, Miliband's Labour and Clegg's Liberal Democrats. And one of the major driving forces, one of the major manifesto promises behind UKIP is the swift exit of Britain from the European Union. Now the EU is both a politically and economically binding union that according to the organizers itself has delivered half a century of peace, stability and prosperity, helped to raise living standards and launch a single European currency, the Euro. Now if the EU could be considered a single economy, which it often always is, it would be the largest economy in the world. Perhaps unsurprising though when one considers it's an amalgamation of 28 economies. Now the Euro currency is perhaps one of the most prominent things binding together the EU EU member state, but it actually affects the British public quite little in a direct sense, because Britain is outside of this Eurozone, this union of nations sharing the Euro as its currency. Of course, we have the pound. But what does directly affect Britain with regards to the EU are the unifying policies such as free inter-EU movement of labour, inter-EU tariff-free trade, and the power to implement these measures in itself. Let's have a look at just these three particular policies, and what it is exactly that Nigel Farage and UKIP want to do about them, and what has gained them so much popularity. Number one, free inter-EU movement of labour. Now this has been a controversial issue for sure. Now immigration has consistently featured in the news outlets of Britain for the past decade at least. Debates have erupted over whether there should be more, whether there should be less, whether there shouldn't be any at all. Now Farage and his crew have frequently blasted the unconditional open door to EU immigrants that is enforced upon Britain like all EU states, by the Union. Article 45 of the EU Treaty entitles every EU citizen to rights such as that to seek employment in another EU country with no need for a work permit. UKIP's line has been very clear on this issue. They believe that immigrants are coming to Britain seeking better pay because Britain's minimum wage is nine times of that of Bulgaria's, for example. And also they believe that they're coming for a better standard of living with things like the NHS, better education, and a generally better infrastructure. Farage believes that this is bleeding Britain economically. UKIP have frequently criticised immigrants for coming to simply leech off Britain's divisive social welfare system that can provide residents with benefits such as free health care and unemployment allowance. Now, UKIP argue this is draining the economy as EU citizens from Eastern Europe in particular take residence in the UK and benefit from things such as the social welfare without contributing a fair amount to the economy. They are certainly correct that many people have chosen to move to Britain from Eastern Europe. For example, Polish is the most commonly spoken non-native language in Britain. But whether they're not contributing a fair amount is not so certain. Now, chef Jamie Oliver, the owner of 30 branches of his Jamie's Italian restaurants throughout the UK, claims that if we didn't have any European immigrants, all of my restaurants would close tomorrow. There wouldn't be any Brits to replace them. Now he cites the improved work ethic of many of the immigrants, suggesting strongly that they do contribute a fair amount. But many immigrants from Eastern Europe demand lower salaries than their British equivalents. The building industry particularly has indicated this. You can see via a quick Google search of Polish builders that they are in very high demand due to their cheap rates and strong work ethic. UKIP solution? Farage suggested that he, upon victory in an election, would enforce a five-year ban on immigration. He strangely admits he would even pursue this policy if it would have a negative impact on Britain's economy. If you said to me, uh, would you want to see over the next ten years a further five million people come into Britain, and if that happened, we'd all be slightly richer, I would say, actually, do you know what, I'd rather we weren't slightly richer. He believes this ban would return employment back to the British youth rather than immigrants and thus boost employment rates among the natives. Farage believes a work permit system should be enforced, via which checks would be made about a potential immigrant suitability to work in Britain. Number 2. Inter-EU Tariff Free Trade Now this is an interesting issue because it's one that UKIP have not really vocally opposed. In fact, it's seen as 
perhaps the best bit of EU membership, allowing Britain to trade with other countries, such as France and Germany, without many of the extra transnational fees that non-EU countries like the USA or Brazil might have to cough up. This is perhaps where UKIP's proposal to leave the EU fails, however. Free trade agreement benefits British businesses, and if we were to leave the Union, the tariffs would return, harming not only the British businesses wishing to trade outwards, but also European businesses looking to invest in Britain, who would also be faced by non-EU tariffs. Now, a solution proposed by some would be the formation of treaties with EU nations to restore free trade simply on an individual nation basis. However, as well as the time and diplomatic issues this would entail, it might just be impossible because some EU member states may see Britain as simply betraying the Union, as Angela Merkel has already suggested, and may, as a result, refuse to sign any agreements, resulting in real losses for Britain's economy. Number three, EU legislation. Now, a widespread worry over the European Union is its undemocratic centralised nature. What's called the democratic deficit has become frustrating to many EU. A Pew Research poll found the majorities of seven major European countries believe their votes for EU representatives have no effect whatsoever, including a staggering 81% of Italians. As a result of voter disenchantment at this complex bureaucratic nature of EU decision, voter turnout has been falling dramatically in recent decades by almost 20% between 1979 and 2009. Now, the EU lacks the very democratic values that it has set as a prerequisite for its member nations. The EU have actually meddled in the national affairs of multiple countries. For example, as a result of the recent Euro crisis, the EU took control of Greece's financial policy. And just last year, they slapped a £1.7 billion bill on Britain for supposedly underestimating its own economic growth. Now, Eurosceptics like Farage and UKIP believe leaving the EU would remove the EU's power over Britain in terms of policy and also discipline. They say that too many decisions are being made in Brussels, a phrase you'll often hear in the EU debate, Brussels being the EU's base city, rather than in Westminster, and they argue more powers would be transferred to the British government and therefore the British people who hold the government responsible if Britain were to leave the EU. Now, the EU debate will certainly continue to be a major talking point for the forthcoming election just in a few months. The major parties have all promised referendums on EU membership should they come to power, and they've been certainly shaken up by UKIP's growth from a protest vote into an actual potential candidate for power in Downing Street. David Cameron and more shockingly Labour's Ed Miliband have set immigration at the top of their agendas in order to sway potential UKIP voters towards them. The high profile defections of two Tory MPs last year to UKIP and rumours of even Labour MPs following suit show truly how close in policy the political parties in Britain have become. Now, the next decade is key for Britain. For whomever wins the next general election, membership of the EU will undoubtedly be a primary focus. And whether the disenchanted among the public will sway government policy, we shall see. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.